2011 was an anomaly in that we had a very wet spring that lasted very late. We had a hot spell. Um, things cleared up. We had a decent fall. 2010 was very similar um, conditions, but if you if a winemaker had a choice, he would have positioned those conditions the way they happened in 2010 rather than 2011, um, because we had a uh, a late start to the growing season. We had a a cool fall. We had a little bit of a heat wave. We had um, what what key of most of all was that we had a beautiful autumn. So everything that happened earlier could be forgiven because September came and the temperatures turned warm during the day and cold at night, which was brilliant. That's, that's textbook. That's what we want. And it lasted that way throughout October. And as I said yesterday, if anybody was there at the 11 o'clock panel, um, it was, I think, the first time in 30 years that I have not seen our agronomist and our winemaker fight. <laughs> you know, you, usually it's like, bring me the grapes, they're not ready yet. All right, they're ready. Oh, I'm not ready for them. Don't screw them up. It's tremendous fights between the two of them. In 2010, it was like, so when's the Brunello going to be ready? I don't know. When would you like that? <laughs> I don't know. How about next week? That's fine. Take time. It was just it was a, a wonderful coincidence of, of nature. We were blessed by nature. Um, so neither the winemaker nor the agronomist can take credit for it either. It's, it's all up to You're taking credit? Mother Nature. No, 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 no. I leave it to the supreme being who takes credit for it. 2010, God finally smiled on Brunello and Brunello deserved it. Um, and, and, but speaking of Brunello, I, I just want to add a couple of notes about, you know, I'm, I'm going on in, in a month I will have celebrated my 30th anniversary in this business. And, um, when I started, Brunello was, I don't want to say it was unknown, because it was known, but it was relatively obscure. Uh, it was, you would not have had this range available to anybody in the States. Um, and it was, it was something that was almost esoteric. Today, Brunello is a cornerstone, and yes, certainly, and I, I will, I won't try to be too humble and tell you that Banffy didn't have its role, but every single producer in this room had its role. Banffy may have lit the match uh, or instigated the, the um, renaissance, but every single producer stood up to it, and that's the key. The reason that there were 27 producers in the consortium in 1978 and there are 208 today is because every single one of them stepped up and kept the promise of quality that Brunello was founded on in the, in the 1800s. Uh, Brunello, uh, again, the question came up yesterday, what about co collaboration with Brunello? And, you know, Italians are, are wonderful people and everybody admires them and esteems them, but they're not known for being the most uh, <laughs> neighborly <laughs> and, and, uh, and open. Um, but I have to tell you the truth, in, in, in Montalcino, I don't know, it must be the good wine that we enjoy all together at, uh, at the Cafe Le Loge or, or, the, or the, uh, the sparkling wine or the Amaro or whatever it is, because they all end up drinking together. Uh, and Montalcino is an anomaly in Italy. It's, it's something that's very unique. It's a very tight consortio that is very much dedicated to quality. And it's, it's wonderful because when, you, when, I, when I lived in Montalcino for the three years in the, in the mid-1990s, I would ride my bicycle. And um, I lived just above Sant'Angelo Scalo, if you're familiar with the geography. And I was young and I was strong, but I couldn't quite make it up to Ipojone because <laughs> that last hill killed me. Uh, so I, I turned around right at uh, right at Upo de Lucho. Um, but when I would ride, when I would try to be lazy and ride along the back roads, I would pass vineyards that, you know, one one vineyard would be as black as coffee, the other one would be as white as this tablecloth, the next one would be as red as this wine, that, that Siena red. The the diversity in Montalcino is phenomenal. Every vineyard is different from another, and just as every producer is different, every style is different. We're tasting all these wonderful styles. There's, there's not a uniformity of style here, but there's a uniformity of quality, and that's what the strength of Brunello is. So I'll get off my soapbox now. Yeah. Pass the yeah. Very nice. Very nice.